guys. This is Dr. Karma Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today, I just wanted to come in because today is the day before Christmas Eve, and I wanted to just say some words of encouragement instead of teaching like I normally do. Uh, let me turn off this loud fan. But I just wanted to come in, and I wanted to just talk to you guys and just encourage you guys. You know, 2020 has been hard for many people. Some of you have lost loved ones. Some of you have lost uh, family and friends due to COVID. Some of you even uh, got COVID. And so, you know, 2020, some of you lost jobs, you know, places to stay. Some of you have been locked in with this narcissist. So that means that you have been locked in the house with this narcissist even your children and, and the abuse has been horrific. Uh, you know, schools have closed down where a lot of the mandated reporters weren't there to monitor what's happening with your children. You didn't have an outlet like to go to a job. You had to work from home, which is good for some, what was bad for others who were still trapped in the home with this narcissist. And so, you know, for many of you guys, you, you spent many years with the narcissist and then this may have been the worst year that you've ever had. I want you to be encouraged because where there's a will, there's a way. And the human will is very powerful when it comes to surviving. And you have to make up your mind that I need to get out of here. Yes, some of you guys have lost finances. You have no way of supporting yourself. You know, some of you say, I've called the crisis hotline or I've called a domestic violence hotline, you know, uh, and, and the shelters are full or they didn't do anything for me. I want you to keep calling. I want you to keep trying. Don't stop. Because you have no idea when there's a will, there's a way. And somehow or another, you're going to connect with a destiny helper. Don't give up and keep trying. You know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is a way to start all over again. Some of you have to make up your mind that, yes, the comfort of how I've lived with this narcissist, you know what? I much rather, uh, like my mother used to tell me, you know, you can replace material things, but you can't re replace your life you know, material things you can get back, material things you can you can work toward and build slowly. But, you know, when it comes to your mind and when it comes to your uh, uh, your life, that's something that's irreplaceable in the life of your children. You are setting an example to your children as to what to accept and what not to accept. You have to remember that you're raising your children, but you're raising someone's husband. You're raising someone's wife. You know, either they're going to be a perpetrator or they're going to be a victim. You know, you don't want to watch your children go through what you've gone through. And then you can see exactly what you were going through, um, you know, from the outside looking in. And that's the most painful thing when you watch your children repeat the cycle of abuse that you were a part of and that you didn't break the abuse. You didn't stop the abuse. When they see that you can do it, you know, you give them hope knowing that they can do it if they ever come, uh, you know, in contact with someone uh, that is a narcissist or abusive in general. And so I want you to be encouraged because here I, I try to work hard to build a tribe that's supportive of, e supportive of each other. And many of you are very supportive of each other. You guys give good feedback. You guys encourage each other. You give, you know, the the, the hotline. I always put the crisis hotline up there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we have those trolls that want to come in and question your credibility. They want to question you in general. They just have some negative stuff to say. But, you know, we kind of eliminate, We not kind of, I eliminate all that because I focus on your well-being, your your heart, your mind, and you know, and and believe it or not, I actually pray for you guys. I do because I, I I'm concerned a lot of times, and I'm not concerned to a point where I'm sleepless. You know that just doesn't work that way. But I'm concerned enough, and and I care enough about you guys where I try to figure out other avenues, ways of of helping you and assisting you any way that I possibly can. Uh, if you go check out, uh, my big sister does a program on Monday called, on Periscope called My Life is Intentional. And as you know, Periscope is going away. So we're going to find another avenue for her. And of course, my mother, Apostle Helen Sadler, to broadcast so that you guys don't miss a beat. But if you go to her program from this past Monday, um, her, her mother was on there, Apostle Helen Sadler, she was on there um, as a, a guest. And one of the things, they say many things. I always say one of the things because I, I pick the nuggets that I want to share with you. I take what, what belongs to me, then I take pick out the food and, and bring it back to you guys. And it was very profound because a lot of you deal, narcissists are very jealous people, very jealous, envious, competitive people. They don't like to see anybody do better than themselves. Or when they met you, they already knew that you were doing better than them because that's why they chose you because they wanted to figure out how to be you, how to do what you do. You know, you're perfect, so I need to figure out how to be perfect like you until they find out that you're imperfect, you know, and a jealous individual. And what she said was, and this is apply, you know, apply this to the narcissist. The narcissist is just jealous for no reason. 
a jealous individual, what they're saying to you is, is that you don't deserve what you have. Some of you guys work very hard um, at what you got. Some of you guys work very hard in building your business, building yourself, building your finances. You know, some of you guys have been in a bad situation prior to meeting the narcissist. And then it started all over again, you know, and you beat yourself up. How did I get into this? But a jealous individual such as a narcissist who's jealous, what they're telling you is, is that you don't deserve what you have. And the only time a person that it be that is jealous or a person that is jealous like that, you know, a jealousy means that you don't deserve what you have. You don't deserve what you get. And you're thinking to yourself, I work very hard in what I got. I work very hard in what I got. And so you do deserve what you have because you work very hard for it. But the narcissist, that that jealous person, that jealous narcissist, you don't deserve what you have. That should be mine. Because of the holes in their hearts, the hole, there are holes in their hearts. They're, they're empty on the inside. They can't fulfill. They're not fulfilled. That's why they jump from person to person to try to fulfill that empty need. You know, when you have a person that is perpetually, I think that's the word in the right context, they're always empty. There's nothing that you put in them that ever stay there. It doesn't matter how much you love them. It doesn't matter if you love the hell out of them. It just doesn't work. You can't do it. And they're constantly empty, empty, empty. And a person that is constantly empty, you keep pouring into them. You're pouring and pouring and pouring and you're just emptying yourself out. Where you feel yourself, you feel depleted. You know, it's not. It's a waste of your time. It really is. And a lot of you guys are, are emotionally attached to these individuals and invested in these individuals where it's hard to separate from them. Uh, and understand Understandably so, you know, so you have to be careful. The the mean well uh, the well mean welling, mean welling, well meaning people. Sometimes they're not even well meaning, they're just ignorant and what they say. Ignorant meaning lack of knowledge. They just say stuff without thinking about what they're saying. Well, it must not have been that bad because you're still there. Or, you know, they make comments like, um, uh, well, just get out of it. Just let it go. You know, just forget about it. Just move on. Well, sometimes you're dealing with people that are ignorant and they're ignorant to the fact of what you're dealing with. Narcissists are not normal people. And that's not a normal relationship that you would be in. There are, and I'm not saying domestic violence is normal. Domestic violence is not normal. There are some people that have been abusers and drug addicts and, and they had some serious psychological issues. And when they got to counseling and, and, and they were able to get to the help that they needed, they were really remorseful. They were regretful at how they behaved and, and what they've done. There were some people that I thought were narcissists that actually apologized to me and they were sincere and they never were like that again. They married, they had children, they had a life and, uh, and I watched them grow. I watched them, you know, uh, process and they really changed and, and they never went back to the way that they were. And so when you, you know, when you're dealing with narcissism all day long, sometimes you don't look back at people and sometimes you do. Uh, but those, you know, there are some people that have perpetrated domestic violence and have changed because they didn't have narcissistic personality disorder. That is a disorder. That is a mental health disorder. That is a personality disorder. It is in the DSM. When we went to school, uh, when we, I'm saying a lot of you therapists that are master level therapists or above, you know, uh, doctor, you find out they used to have the five axes. The first axis, the axis number one was like uh, depression, anxiety, ADHD, things like that. But bipolar disorder, that was the axis one. The axis two were personality disorders. And how we were taught in school is personality disorders do not change. You cannot change it. The only thing that you can do is maybe treat comorbidity. I think that's the word. The, the other, uh, you know, the other... Uh, mental health issues, maybe like depression, anxiety, you give them medication, they're able to sleep, you help them to sleep, but a personality disorder does not change. It is a pathological disorder, pathological meaning abnormal, meaning that it causes problems in their life and other people's lives, you know, and you watch them as they get older, they get worse and worse and worse and worse. You know, sometimes you can look at your own parents and at one point in time, you they were not like that at one time, or, you know, they weren't even that bad at one time. And now that they're older or even with that, that narcissist partner, you know, you're looking like they weren't even this bad at one time. They just got worse and worse with time. And it's almost to a point where you can't even tolerate. Some of you guys can't even tolerate being around family or being around certain friends anymore. You know, if, if you still consider them friends. But narcissistic personality disorder, the pathological, you, they qualify. You got nine traits. I'll talk about it one day. Nine traits. I think it's five out of, out of nine traits 
that that classifies you as having narcissistic personality disorder. Now, most of you guys are not mental health professionals, so don't try to diagnose people. You know, that's that's not what you do. We give you information, but there is a system of checks and balances to make sure that you qualify to be able to diagnose people, test and measurements, and you know, qualify to be able to diagnose people. And then you have to be able to to support that uh, diagnosis with documentation, with symptomology, even with experiences, whether it's in a practice or an internship and then hands-on experiences and and I was taught well by an, uh, by a uh, psychiatrist that attended uh, that was at UW she was in her I don't know practicum or uh, whatever it residency um, and what she was learning she taught me medication uh, disorders and so I had uh, the pleasure not just to work uh, in these fields with abnormal psychology but I had the pleasure of working with uh, the psych oh, I need to find her name because I really need to just tell her thank you and I know she's probably in somewhere practicing but I really need to say that she I used to want to choke her because she's a medical doctor and medical doctors look at symptoms symptomology I'm a mental health professional, so I look at emotions and background and how did it get there. She was concerned with symptomology. How does the medication work? What are they doing? How, and then you do whatever you do. I'm going to do what I do. And so a lot of times we clash, but really till this day, if I can find her, she really, she blessed my soul because she really taught me. And I'm, I'm going to tell her, thank you. I'm going to find her. You watch. But, uh, but you know, so don't go out trying to diagnose. And when you go into the court system, courts are fact-based. When you go into court, you can't go into court telling the judge and lawyers, that's a narcissist. Do you understand what narcissism is? Go watch Dr. Carmen, uh, Carmen's videos and you'll learn. You'll find out. They want to know facts. First of all, how do you know that that person has narcissistic personality disorder? Because a person is not technically the correct uh, description is that a person has narcissistic personality disorder. I think out of the empowerment of survivors, we say they are a narcissist. Well, actually, that is in, inappropriate is actually they have narcissistic personality disorder, you know. And then when you go into the courtroom, they're going to want to know what are your credentials? What is your background? How do you qualify to diagnose somebody with that? Well, Dr. Carmen said, who's Dr. Carmen? Who is she supposed to be? Where we where, where do this at? You know, she's an expert and she talks about it. Nobody cares about that. When you go into the court you going in there with facts. You have to go in there with facts. And the facts are, this person is violent. This person abused my children. This person has police records. This person uh, did this and I had to go into a homeless shelter. This person uh, would not allow me to sleep deprives me. This person won't give me money. This, the, you have to state facts. When you're dealing with a narcissist, you're dealing with domestic violence. That's what you're dealing with. And you have to state facts when you go in there. To tell someone that they're a narcissist, that's not going to work for you. Go in there with facts. And you'll be surprised, you know, especially if you get a domestic violence advocate to assist you. They have credibility in the courtroom. And so I just wanted to bring some encouragement and let you guys know that this tribe is here for you. I care about you. The people on this platform care about you. I mean, we know that everybody is not a survivor. We know that we have some narcissists on here. That's fine. They're not doing any harm. They're listening. They may do harm somewhere, gathering information. But as long as you guys are okay, and this tribe encourages and, and, and you know, encourages and bring you, provide you with encouraging words, and I'll let you stay on the platform because you guys do an awesome job. And I love the tribe that I belong to. And I want you guys to stay tuned because I'll be back. I'll try to come on Christmas just to say, of course, I'm going to come on Christmas, but I'm going to come on Christmas to check in on you guys live and talk to you guys if we have enough time um, and talk to you guys to see how you guys are doing. You know, I want you to know I care about all of you guys. Those of you, uh, a lot of the a lot of you individuals that are part of the tribe are also a part of the LBGTQ community. And I know a lot of times I speak on heterosexual relationships and I speak of the male and the female. And I do that on purpose when I speak of male and when I think of uh, speak of female, and even though uh, it may be a same-sex relationship. There's still female in thought process and behavior. There's still male in thought process and, and behave. When I say behavior, I don't mean behavior, meaning that if you identify, you know, if you're a male and you identify with being female, but what I'm saying is, is behavior, the pathological behavior of a narcissist, the mindset and the MO or the, the mission of operation, you know, the mindset and the pathological mindset and behaviors of narcissists and I give it to you from the point of view of, of how males and how females and then you just have to take that and put that in the community how it works in same-sex relationships I'm not well versed in it and so as a therapist we understand that it in order to take care of people 
we have to make sure we refer to the right resources. And someone has just, and I know uh, Angie Atkinson, because uh, someone let me know that she does a lot of teaching on the LBGTQ community and has speakers in there. So I encourage you, a lot of you guys to get more information, you know, go over to her page and check out what she's talking about concerning the LBGTQ. She's more well-versed in it than I am. And so I want to make sure that you guys get good resources. For example, those of you that need counseling, a lot of you guys need counseling. You're looking for coaching. Coaching. Sometimes when you connect with me as a coach, I can tell that it's not coaching that you need. You need counseling and you want counseling. And so because you see my face on a, a on a social platform, you feel comfortable. But because you're not in the state of Washington, I cannot provide you with counseling. And I understand, you know, but at the same time, I cannot provide you with counseling because you're not in the state of Washington and I'm only licensed in the state of Washington. So of course, I'm going to protect myself. You know, at the same time, I also want to make sure that you get resources. And so you can look up uh, places like betterhelp.com, which is a vetted resources. And many people that I've referred have given me some, some great reviews. They have some great counselors within their state. They're licensed in your state. They do online counseling. They do virtual counseling. They do telephonic counseling. What you need and they're licensed in your state, even in Canada, had, had excellent reviews about um, betterhelp.com. And if you go to betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen, they will provide you with a 10% discount just from using my link. If you're having financial struggles, let them know and they can work with you to see they can provide you with the grant to lower the cost of the uh, services. But some of you guys have to get counseling. You need to get counseling because you're your greatest investment. You need to protect your mind and you need to protect your heart. You need to get some coping skills. You need to get some recommendations to med providers. You know, those of you that do believe in, in medication temporarily to assist you with working on that anxiety and that, that depression while you're working with a counselor, you know, not to be used. Some of you guys are holistic. And so you find holistic um, ways of being able to, um, to, you know, you can go look up uh, uh, holistic providers that provide uh, like uh, St. John's Wart. I think it's something like that. I'm not I'm not holistic in the, the, the vitamin, so I'm not sure. But you can find those of you that are holistic, find a holistic practitioner to help you with uh, supplements that assist with uh, anxiety and depression, you know, things like that. So I encourage you guys, exercise, eating right, sleeping well. Some of you guys need to get some sleep. If you sleep, you know, some of that fog will lift off. You know, uh, you guys need some rest. You guys been living anxious on eggshells, living in the homes with these narcissists, walking on eggshells. You don't know what to expect when they come in. They're happy. They're sad. They're going to blow up. You know, I'm confused. And they keep you like that on purpose. And so you have to find means, you know, you, you eat healthy, exercise, do something with your mind, read, research, write, journal, get counseling, you know, the whole person concept, spiritual, uh, you know, those of you that, that, that need, you know, spirit is a part of you. Uh, some of you need church. Some of you meditate. Some of you guys uh, uh, pray, chant, whatever it is that you do in your belief system, that's what you do. And I also encourage you, a lot of you guys that are uh, believers, Christians, uh, you're also welcome. You know, if you have a church home, of course, I'm not trying to pull you out of your church home, you know, but to augment to that, to assist because pastors and, and believers, they need to join together and assist each other. <clears throat> and you are welcome to come on Thursdays uh, to Into His Chambers Global Ministries or Apostle Helen Sadler, who you see, Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. She's also the presiding prelay of Into His Chambers Global Ministries. And so I encourage you guys, if you need that extra, some of that extra, you know, she's got videos on Periscope. You go to Into His Chambers. Actually, on Periscope is Apostle Helen Sadler, I think. Apostle Helen uh, Sadler. Yeah, it's Apostle Helen Sadler. As you guys know, Periscope is going away, so you can find her on Twitter as well. Um, you go on Facebook, Apostle Helen Sadler, or Into His Chambers uh, Ministry. She mostly posts on Into His Chambers Global Ministry or Into His Chambers Ministry. Just go look, you'll find it. Um, and you can join us on Thursdays. She comes on on Thursdays. On Sundays, there's only essential workers in the church. There's only a handful of us in the church. But at the same time, she's live and she does two services, one at 9 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time, and I think one at 1230. I think that's when we come on. But if you need that extra, and then she comes on during the weekday to encourage and grow you and to build you. So I encourage you guys and also go to her YouTube channel, Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. She talks about narcissistic personality disorder, but she talks about um, the abuse and, and how these people operate and function from a spiritual biblical perspective. You even have people 
You know, a lot of times you're hearing the women talk about it, but a lot of times you need to hear it from a male's perspective. You have people like Quinn Holiday, Associate Direct, and he provides you with information from a male's perspective and from the experience of a male being with a female narcissist. And so you guys go and listen to him and he talks about it from his um, standpoint. You have people like the Honorable Bishop um, R.C. Blake. Now, mine is the Honorable Apostle Helen Sadler. And then you have the Honorable um, uh, Bishop R.C. Blake. He talks about relationships. He talks about it from a male perspective, from a Christian standpoint about relationships and, and you know, when, when, you know, quality people, quality men, quality women, uh, he speaks from a father's perspective, you know, to assist you, uh, especially women, you know, I read his book and it just, it touched, it blessed me. You guys go get the father daughter talk, you know, and he, and he, and what I love about him is that he, from a male father's perspective, he encourages daughters. You know, he encourages women, he encourages daughters. So those of you that didn't have a father to speak into your life, he speaks from a father's perspective. He talks to you. He's having the talk with us women that our fathers may not have had with us. Then you have Bishop um, um, T.D. Jakes. You have Ron, uh, Apostle Ron Carpenter. You have all these men that speak, you know, from a male perspective. But I'm telling you, there's resources out there. You got to use it. And so I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your support. Please take the time to subscribe. I'm Dr. Karma Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Make sure you share these videos. You can find me on, on Periscope, which is going away, but you can find me on Twitter at Dr. Carmen Bryant 1. You can find me on Periscope, which is Dr. Carmen Bryant. That's going away, so you guys know that'll be in March, but I do come on live there too. Facebook page, which is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse and Psychological Health Consultants and Services. You can find me on Instagram, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. You can find me on TikTok. The young folks got me on TikTok. So I do like one minute clips. I'm still trying to work with my camera because I want to do the split screen. So somebody tell me how to do the split screen on this so I can talk to myself. So oh, I'm talking to myself, but I'm talking to you. But at the same time, I do one minute clips. They're very powerful because they're giving you definitions, words, the, the, today's word, you know, word of the day, today's word. But I'm, I'm breaking it down for you and I'm and doing in bite sizes. You know, sometimes the young people got the attention span of a, of a, of a little gnat. You know, they don't want to listen to all this right here. This is too much. This is too much talking right here. So a lot of them, you catch them at, you know, you have to catch them at every age, catch them on every platform at every age level. You have the, the elderly, you, you have our elders, you know, our elders who have been through this. And sometimes we don't even know that they've been through this. You have the young people that are going through it and you don't even know that they're going through domestic violence because they don't really talk about it that much. Or you give them the information, they'll act upon it. Um, you have, uh, of course, YouTube right here. And then what else? Podbean. I am on Podbean. So if you go to Podbean, that's my main platform, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. You find me on Podbean, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play. Uh, where else will you find me? There's a lot of platforms you can find me on. If you just put my name in Google, Dr. Carmen Bryant, or Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, you'll find me on whatever platform that suits you. Sometimes you don't have time to watch the videos. You want to hear the podcast. So whenever I upload on a podcast, you guys are welcome to listen, play it on your car, in your earphones, if you're having to work, you know, or if you're, um, you know, if you're listening to um, YouTube, you know, the commercials, you got to click on the commercials. So sometimes it's, it's, it's easier to just go to Podbean. But, you know, I appreciate you guys. I have a book. It's called Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. Purchase the book. You can find it on Barnes & Noble, on Amazon. You can get an ebook. You can get it Kindle. You know, you get a hard copy. You get a soft copy, you know, and, and order it. Put it. Make it a stuffing stop, stuffing stopper. A st stocking stuffer. What in the world? A stocking stuffer. There we go. And, and bless somebody with it. You know, sometimes you don't, you're surprised because people don't want to tell you what they're going through. But when you share the videos or a book or something like, hey, I know this lady right here and give them the book and then tell them to go to the, you know, sometimes you may not know that they're watching, but they're secretly watching. They just don't want you to know because some of them are not ready to face, face what they're going through. Cognitive dissonance. They're not ready to face the reality or the truth of what they're going through. And so just share that, share the links. Go to Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. Make sure you go sign up with betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. Those of you that have asked me about donations, right up underneath my link, there's my Cash App and my PayPal. And I, I know I was asking you guys the other day, you guys got to help me. I got the chair. I would turn it around. I got the chair. So I have the chair in here. Now there's some more stuff that I need to set up the studio so that we can go on other platforms and I can provide you with classes and things like that. So that takes a little time. So I'm, you know, I'm dependent on my tribe to help me out, help me grow. I have someone sending me another ring light. I've already got the, um, the studio, the camera, the professional lights that I have to set up. Those are like fire. 
You get up under there, you get a suntan. It's like being in a, in a tanning bed, but I got the lights. I already have the lights to, so I can set it up. Got the microphone. You guys help me with the microphone. I got the microphone, got the webcam, got all that. So now I just have other stuff that I have to set up so I can get the decor on the wall. So you guys will have these beautiful bare walls back here. But we're going to get it set up. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for loving me just as much as I love you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Tomorrow is uh, Christmas Eve. Some of you guys I know uh, in Germany, uh, tradition is to open up gifts on Christmas Eve and then celebrate, you know, have a day, Christmas Day. Uh, I know in America is, is Christmas Day, you know, or whatever you choose. I just want you to choose to have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Get you some hot cocoa. Get in front of the fireplace. You know, watch some. Let's let's watch a lifetime. Well, tomorrow I'm gonna clean my house and then I'm gonna sit down and watch some. So I'm gonna. And it's the hardest thing for most of us that are real busy. I had to add this in here for a lot of you guys that are really busy like I am. You know, a lot of times it's really hard to self care. When I say self care, to sit down and not do anything and just watch TV. Sometimes I do feel guilty because I feel like I need to be doing something, but that is starting to dissipate because when I take some time off, I sit down to refresh. I watch some movies to try to distract myself from the things that I talk all day long. A lot of you guys who are coaches and counselors understand all day long, you're dealing with trauma, broken hearts, broken minds all day long, every day. I talk all day long. And so sometimes it's just nice to sit and watch television and get off the phone. Because sometimes I find myself on the phone commenting on you guys and seeing and looking to see what else I can post. And so sometimes I take the phone and set it to the side and just sometimes I'm doing it more often and just enjoy a movie. You know, just like I told you guys the last time we had holidays, I watched the Predator series. I actually watched the Predator series. I actually purchased two of the movies, you know, rented two of the movies and then watched it in order to make two videos about the Predator. But I enjoyed it. And so some of you guys that are really, really busy, don't feel guilty. You still have to do self-care. Take care of yourself. Get you some rest. Go for a walk. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the fact that you made it out and some people did not. Some people did not make it out of the relationship. Some people are still in the relationship suffering greatly. So I appreciate you guys. This is a long video. It's like 26 minutes. But I appreciate you guys. You guys have a wonderful day and you guys go be great.